In this video, I'm going to talk about sort of entry level gear that's appropriate for a casual drive uh, across Vietnam on scooters or 150cc motorbikes. Uh, it's also gear that's appropriate for off roading uh, or getting you into that ADV adventure world. Uh, really, what we're looking for is a compromise of price, safety, and also breathability because Vietnam is obviously very hot and it's important that the gear you have on you feel comfortable in because otherwise what happens is it ends up on the rack of your motorbike because you're not comfortable wearing it and then it's no good at all. So having breathable gear in this country is incredibly important. So starting with the helmet, this is a LS2436 dual sport helmet. Uh, they ha dual sports have visors, basically they're off-road helmets with a visor and the more stuff you add onto the helmet, um, the heavier they become. So I actually prefer to go with an off-road helmet. This is a flight kinetic helmet. Both the dual sport I just showed and this one are about $120. But with the off-road helmet, you have a nice big open eye port, which is great for wind flow when you're on the road. And one of the big downsides to off-road helmets is because they're so breathable, so lightweight, they're noisy. So if you're on a fast uh, road bike or you're doing road journeys or you're in a Kawasaki Ninja, that kind of thing, they're obviously not appropriate. But for little motorbikes, scooters, 150cc bikes, off-road off -road helmets are great. Incredibly lightweight, so you can do many, many hours in them without having a big load on your head. Uh, this one here is ECE and DOT certified, so they're safe. But most importantly, they're just cool to wear. You're not going to overheat in them. So with the helmet, if you're going off-road, then you'll need a set of goggles. Uh, we have the Fly goggles, they're $30. The Oakley goggles, which are $40. Oakley, obviously international brand, famous for sunglasses. But basically, goggles are goggles. They're there to stop the dust going into your eyes, the wind drying out your eyes, and any projectiles that might be on the road that are going to fling into your eyes. That's what a goggle is for. So with the off-road helmet, you just pop them on. If you have a dual sport helmet, the one with the visor, then goggles are still optional. Those helmets are still designed for goggles as well. An element of safety gear that's often forgotten is the boot, and it's said to be the second most important part after the helmet. The boot is what protects your ankles from brakes. When you come off a motorbike and they're pretty heavy, um, then it's easy for your legs to get trapped under the bike and your ankles to break. The motocross boot, is designed to be stiff and rigid, so it's hard for your ankles to bend in them. This particular boot, uh, the Fly Maverick motocross boot, is $160. It's a very cheap entry-level boot. Usually boots are $400 or more, but we've been using these with our own tour guides over a year now, and um, we've been really happy uh, with the durability. They're not breaking, that kind of thing. But the boot's really, really important also for protection uh, from debris on the road. When your front wheel goes over sticks and things, they can ping up and hit your shins. The boot's there to protect you from all of that. The next item that you have to consider is your armor. So when people think of armor, they tend to go towards the ADV jacket. This is an LS2 one at $110. They come with elbow pads. Um, elbow pads, shoulder pads. Uh, this particular one has a back pad. But the thing is with jackets is they're adding an entire layer on top and they're also resistant to road abrasions. Now that's a good and a bad thing. If you crash on the road, they're gonna protect you. But the downside is they're incredibly hot to wear. So it's difficult to stop at the side of the road, take pictures, talk to your friends, that kind of thing. And in my experience in this country, people who have jackets, tend to just put them in their luggage and never wear them. So what I think is a better approach is you go with something like this. This is a force field pro shirt. It's $280, but it's top of the line gear, CE level two armor versus CE level one on a jacket like this. And the whole thing is designed for breathability. It's like a mesh material. All of the armor inside has holes that go through. And this really is the comfiest most breathable way uh, to wear a full set of armor. Now, if that's still too hot for you, which for me it was because you have to have a t-shirt on, the armored t-shirt, and then something over top, 
And you can go with something like this. This is a force field pro tube. And these go on your elbows or on your knees. These are $100 for a set. So if you want to have knee and elbows, $200. But it removes the issue of having two layers on. Now you can just put on whatever t-shirt you want, whatever jeans you want, trousers you want over the top of these, and you're mostly safe. Generally, when you fall off a motorbike, you hit with your knees or elbows. At least in my experience, this has been enough. So the force field uh, pro tube is soft armor. And people find this a little bit scary. They're like, is this really gonna protect me? But this is a UK brand. And basically the idea is when it hits the ground, it becomes solid. And they really are amazing material. But if you do want the hard material, then this is the Fly Barricade knee pads. And these are $30, so they're incredibly cheap. And you can just get one of these for your knees, one of these for your elbow. And again, you're then in a position where you can wear whatever normal regular clothing you want over the top of the armor. Now the thing about this is, if you are driving scooters or 150cc bikes like the XR or you're off-roading, you're not going to be doing massive speeds on the road. And at least if you are on the road, you need to keep in mind that you are lacking abrasion resistance. So you need to decide on the kind of driving you're doing, the kind of speeds that you're going to do before heading out there uh, and selecting your armor. So the other way to do it is you go with the full abrasion resistance, all this kind of stuff, and you can arguably do higher speeds on the road, but you do need to be incredibly aware that whenever you stop, you're gonna be really hot. So as a compromise for the speeds here, I think this is the way forwards. So moving on to the gloves, again, if you're going lightweight, easy, breathable, you can pick up a pair of motocross gloves. These are fly ones, are about $20. And really it's just giving you protection from the grips um, on the bike, a little bit of protection around other areas. The nice thing about motocross gloves is they're designed so you can really feel the bike, you can feel the brakes, you can feel the clutch lever, gives you good control. If you're going a little bit heavier, you can get something like this, LS2 Rust gloves. These are goat leather, they have some padding on. They're not too thick, so you can still uh, feel the motorbike, but at the same time, they're not like a massive road gauntlet. So this is what I'd say is a compromise of safety, breathability, and not, not removing all the feel of the bike. These roll in at $55. Personally, I just go motocross. I think breathability is really important. So next up, what a lot of people do is they buy armor like this. Now this is $150 uh, protection on the front and back. And that's okay, but really what these are designed for is uh, their motocross design and therefore impacts of stones and stuff like that are not really crash protection. So when you're buying gear, you do need to be aware of that. Now obviously it's gonna provide some protection in a crash and this one here is incredibly lightweight and breathable, but technically not designed for a big impact crash. So over the armor, you now have to decide you can wear your normal clothes or you can get something like this. These are motocross trousers. And what people don't realize with motocross trousers, the fly ones we have here anyway, <coughs> this gap just above the knees allows wind really does to to float up through the trouser it's great they've also got slight padding in the knees and in the hips but again just super breathable really they are the next best thing to wearing shorts so i always go with the motocross gear because it's so cool same for the t-shirts just holes everywhere they weigh nothing your sweat kind of evaporates off and they keep you cool. An item that every single driver should have, and I don't care on the discipline really, is a water bladder. So if you're carrying around water bottles on the back of your motorbike, A, it's impossible to keep them on, they always fall off, and B, the sun actually melts the plastic into the water and you can taste it. These Fox uh, water bladders are $25. They keep the water cool, they sit on your back, they weigh nothing, uh, and you can drink water all day long with them. This for me was a big game changer as again, driving around in this country, I was always getting dehydrated without even meaning to and getting headaches. And this sorted that out. They're really underrated for travelers. So the next thing is rain gear. <laughs> Our rain gear is actually quite difficult to get right. In Vietnam, uh, most people use the Vietnamese rain poncho and it's great 
up to a certain point, it flaps in the wind. It's a little bit dangerous if you have an open chain, you can get caught up in that, that kind of thing. And then if you're going down the rain suit line, you find that you sweat from the inside out. They're not breathable enough. They're not uh, uh, Gore-Tex material. It's cheap copy material, really. And so you get very wet on the inside just from your own sweat. So these have been really popular in our company. Race FX uh, rain jackets. Super lightweight, breathable. You can fold them down into nothing. And they're taking the breathability so far that actually under the arms, it's just little holes. There's nothing even there. So again, you can wear whatever clothes you want. You've got your Under Armour on the Pro shirt, the Pro Tube, whatever t-shirt you want over the top. And then one of these, you stay nice and cool in the tropical weather. It's worth keeping in mind just because it's raining doesn't mean it's not hot. It can be hot and raining at the same time. These ones are about $25, yeah, that's right. So the last thing is, what to do about your luggage. Now there is no easy and cheap answer to this. You can, if you have a luggage wrap, you can just strap them down with bungees or what we have is rock straps. Uh, but when it comes to panniers, side racks, that kind of thing, the only one that really works on dual sport or off-road motorbikes is these Krieger Adventure Packs. There's about three or four different uh, serious pannier luggage rack systems in the world. They're not easy to get right and they're all very expensive. The Krieger one is from the UK. It's the best one that I found and I like to use it. Um, but they roll in about $350. In Vietnam, they do have uh, some $50 side bags, but they tend to just break. And you don't want that on your journey because then all your bags fall out of the, uh, the pannier system. So the Krieger Adventure bag, I think is worth the investment if you're a serious adventure rider, dual sport rider, you have a bike like an XR. So yeah, that's about it. That's a range of entry level gear to get you started. Uh, it's appropriate for this country, the speeds that we tend to do, and it should get you into the world of adventure riding or off-road riding, which is really, really fun in this country.